What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we discussing today? Today we are going to discuss the Farmer's Almanac and its prediction for this coming winter, specifically over Canada and the United States. But we were seeing a lot of headlines recently about the predictions for this coming winter, specifically from the Farmer's Almanac. So I thought, you know what? I think that might be a good topic to cover this week. And here we is, discussing it this week. So if you've heard of the Farmer's Almanac before, you're probably familiar with the fact that they predict the weather up to a year in advance. So we're talking pretty much until August of next year, they have made a prediction. And you might be thinking to yourself, but wait, Kayla, Jim, I thought that we couldn't predict accurately more than like three days out. What are these people over here at the Farmer's Almanac Incorporated <laughs> doing forecasting a year in advance? That's right, they say that they have some computational analysis that they do, mathematical computations, and they're able to predict out for many months in advance. I thought I saw somewhere they were like two years in advance that they were predicting things. Now, now, let's, let's look at it this way. Uh, a lot of people use the Farmer's Almanac definitely for trends and for identifying certain weather events that could happen. And they've been pretty good with that, in fact, they say that their readers actually say they're about 85% accurate, which is really, really good, okay. especially forecasting that far in advance. Yeah. In contrast, the complexities of just forecasting how much precipitation and temperature you're going to get in a specific location, the National Weather Service even has a hard time with that after seven days. So for the Farmer's Almanac folks to be able to predict events months in advance is pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, very now, interesting. Now I have had experience where I've looked at the Farmer's Almanac, bought their book, you know, and, and looked and went, oh, okay, January 7th through the 10th is going to be a snowstorm. And sometimes that didn't happen. Or sometimes it wound up, we had snow, but it wasn't a snowstorm. And then there's been other times where, yeah, we got a snowstorm. So again, you know, there's times when they nail it and there's times where they don't and they admit it. But uh, yeah, that's all part of forecasting. But what's really interesting is that they have their own modeling, we'll say, uh, to predict these up to say a year in advance, maybe even longer. So like you just said, this is more of like a forecast based off of trends, more along the lines of climatology than what the NWS is doing, because NWS is focusing more on specific days, not quite far out as much. So there's a little bit of difference if, you, if you're thinking, like, why isn't the NWS doing this? If the Farmer's Almanac can do it, why can't the National Weather Service do this? A little bit of different mindset behind the forecast. And we're actually gonna do a deeper dive at some point in the future on, well, how do they do their forecasting and what really is the accuracy? Then we can actually do a little bit of a contrast as to this is how the Weather Service does their forecasting and this is how the Farmer's Almanac folks do their forecasting. Yeah, so if you'd like to see that video, leave a comment below letting us know. But before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. So let's go ahead and get into the Farmer's Almanac 2022 to 2023 Extended Winter Forecast. According to our extended forecast, there should be quite a few significant winter weather disturbances nationwide in 2022 and 2023. A few of these dates include the first week of January in the Rockies and across the plains. During this time, we see good potential for heavy snow that may reach as far south as Texas and Oklahoma, followed by a sweep of bitterly cold air. January 16th through 23rd will raise another red flag for bouts of heavy rain and snow across the eastern two-thirds of the country, followed by what might be one of the coldest outbreaks of Arctic air we have seen in several years. How cold? Try 40 degrees below zero. 40 degrees below zero. Now, I wasn't exactly sure whether we we're talking wind chill temperatures or actual temperatures. Okay, and wait, are we talking Celsius or Fahrenheit? Because, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, um, is it minus 40 Celsius and minus 40 Fahrenheit the exact same thing? I'm just going to revoke my meteorology degree. Editing Kayla, could you give us a quick little... Um, yeah, you know... 
let's just say it's minus 40 degrees. Is it wind chill? Is it actual temperature? Sure. If it's actual temperature and then there's wind on top of it, it makes a huge difference. But either way, minus 40 degrees is bitterly cold really without cold. the wind. <laughs> so you get those temperatures over the eastern two thirds. Now, I remember growing up in the northeast and you know we would see negative 40 degree wind chills during the winter time uh, on occasion so it's nothing new however if if folks haven't been accustomed to that in many years or you have folks that have transplanted from other areas of the globe and they're not used to that it, it's gonna feel like quite a shock yeah. so yeah yeah something to keep in mind that okay it looks like a bitter cold event probably planned for January so we've discussed that it is going to be, according to their predictions, a pretty cold winter, narrowing on on a couple specific dates here. But pretty much US and Canada is in for a very cold winter. How much snow is going to be associated with this very cold air? Because if it's going to be that cold, Kayla philosophy here, if it's going to be that cold, there better be snow. That's right. It might as well snow if it's going to be that cold. Let's take a look at what they say. Winter 2022 to 2023 should be dominated by an active storm track in the eastern half of the country, running from the western Gulf of Mexico to the northeast, across the Virginias, and across interior New York State and New England. Areas south of the storm track, much of the southeast, will see frequent storms bringing cold rains and a wintry mix of wet snow, sleet, ice, freezing rain, as well as chilly temperatures. The I-95 corridor can be included in this winter mix zone, with places to the north of the track seeing the precipitation fall more as snow, and at times, a lot of it. This may be especially true over the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes area. Snow lovers will be happy in the north central states, as they will see a fair share of storminess during the winter season, which should mean plenty of snow for winter enthusiasts to enjoy, maybe even in time for a white Christmas. The south central states are forecast to see some accumulating snow, especially in early January. The far west and the Pacific Northwest will see about normal winter precipitation. However, the southwest will experience less than normal. So it appears to me that one of the only regions not predicted to get snow associated with said cold weather would be our lovely state in the southeast. Um, <laughs> why is it always cold and raining? It's like 33 degrees and freezing rain instead of snow. I just want snow. Well, if we take a look at the graphic that Ed and Caleb can pop up right here. The North Carolina, Southern Virginia, Southern Appalachians is right on that border where it is cold and snowy or wet, slushy, chilly. So it just depends, as we know from forecasting in the winter time, 50 miles of a low pressure center's track can make a huge difference in whether you get snow, freezing rain, or rain. And again, Farmer's Almanac does not get into specifics. They just look more at region and at trends and what a good prediction would be for certain areas. So really fine tuning that. That's the job of your National Weather Service. To all my friends in the Washington DC area, I am super jealous of all the snow that the Farmer's Almanac seems to be thinking you're about to get. DC is gonna be really interesting now that I think about it because we just talked about the I-95 corridor. Oh yes. So if you are north and west of I-95 in the DC area, chances are you're gonna get hit with a lot more snow than if you are south and east. So we'll have to see how these storms track this winter. Let's move on to some other general predictions that the Farmer's Almanac talks about for this coming winter. A cold December and a very cold January might make readers in the Northeast shake and shiver, but February will bring milder temperatures that should make winter seem more bearable. The Southeast will experience some shivers, especially during the month of January. Fortunately for the snowbirds, February will likewise warm the region to near normal winter season temperatures overall. Winter will feel unreasonably cold for readers in the Great Lakes region, especially in January. Further south, into the Southern Plains, temperatures will average chillier than normal. The Pacific Northwest will see brisk, cool conditions, and the Southwest will be the mild area of the country with near normal winter temperatures. The 2022-2023 winter season may have record-breaking cold temperatures of 40 degrees below zero in some places in the U.S. 
So there you go, there you have some of the general predictions from the Farmer's Almanac with some more specifics for certain regions. But there's some very interesting folklore that they've also included on their website that is really interesting. Thought it would be good to bring it up here as well. Get your opinion, see if you've seen these things as well. Here are the signs of a hard winter to come according to folklore. Number one, thicker than normal onions or corn husks. If you grew corn or harvested some onions from the garden, Check the skins to see if they're thicker or thinner. It doesn't count with store-bought onions, which may have grown elsewhere. Number two, woodpeckers sharing a tree. Number three, the early arrival of the snowy owl. Number four, the early departure of geese and ducks. Number five, the early migration of the monarch butterfly. Number six, thick hair on the nape of a cow's neck. Number seven, heavy and numerous fogs during the month of August. Number eight, raccoons with thick tails and bright bands. Number nine, mice chewing furiously to get into your home. Number 10, the early arrival of crickets on the hearth. Number 11, spiders spinning larger than usual webs and entering the house in great numbers. <laughs> Number 12, pigs gathering sticks. <laughs> That's an interesting one. <laughs> Number 13, ants marching in a line rather than meandering. Number 14, early seclusion of bees within the hive. Number 15, unusual abundance of acorns. Number 16, muskrats burrowing holes high in the riverbank. Number 17, see how high the hornet's nest twill tell how high the snow will rest. Number 18, the size of the orange band on the woolly bear caterpillar. Number 19, squirrels gathering nuts early to fortify against the hard winter. And number 20, frequent halos or rings around the sun or moon forecasts numerous snowfalls. And what about persimmons? What about them? Winter weather lore says to cut inside the seed of a ripe persimmon. The shape of the cotyledon will tell you what's in store for winter. Okay, so um, <laughs> the three little pigs and the ants go marching will determine how your winter's gonna be. So, you know, if you got some pigs in your backyard, see if they're picking up sticks. If you got ants, uh, see how they're marching. And if you have an abundance of spiders in your house, I'm sorry, but maybe it means it's gonna be cold. If you've observed a <laughs> wolf blowing down the sticks of, <gasps> never mind, never mind. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Hey, you know what? It could be very true. I just find them hilarious. These are the signs. <laughs> I, I could see squirrels gathering more acorns to gather more That food. would make sense, but uh, why did the pigs need sticks? That, yeah, I wish they explained Where are a they going? more. Are they building a house? Does he have two other friends? Did they go to the market first? <laughs> Where's the big bad wolf? Which one went wee wee wee? We don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up, we're done. <laughs> if you've seen anything like this, comment below. So there you have it. This winter's forecast from the Farmer's Almanac. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss the next one. Check us out over here on social media, Facebook and Instagram, as well as checking out our School of Weather and our website, which will be linked down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. say that. Cotyledon? Cotyledon? We're going to do a search. Cotyledon. 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 Cotyledon.